it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, October 3rd. Okay, so we have the moon in Libra energy here all day because, of course, we just had the new moon solar eclipse take place in Libra here yesterday afternoon. We're still in this new moon phase. We're still in the eclipse energy. However, the closer that we are to this particular situation and circumstance, the more confusion, the more delusion, the more uncertainty, the more indecision reigns supreme. The further we get away from this particular energetic event, the clarity is going to come. The fog is going to be lifted. The indecision is going to step aside and we're going to start seeing the smaller details actually reveal themselves in order to point us in the right path, in the right direction. There's still a lot of energy swirling. We're still very unstable between our heart and our headspace. There are still situations, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, popping off in order to illuminate the actual karmic ham that we are currently being dealt that we are going to have to really take a good look at as far as the moves available for us to actually play but we're not in a time to actually play those particular moves as of yet we're just thinking about it we're strategizing we're just trying to be patient so with the moon in this Libra energy, of course, we're trying to strike balance. We're trying to find peace. We're trying to find harmony in our lives, especially in our inner realm between our heart and our head, especially between considering the old version of self, that old realm of reality, those old chapters that we're trying to put behind us. And of course, the new ones that we are trying to open up and begin. There's a lot of teeter tottering continuing into today's energy in order for us to find that sweet spot. So there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Five of them are going to involve the moon. Before we jump into any moon interactions, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Libra energy again. Part of the trio, the sun, the moon, and Mercury, they were working very closely together under that new moon solar eclipse peak potency energy. Again, if you haven't listened to the astro forecast, downloaded your moon guide, or even taken the astro class, I'm going to recommend that you do all of those things. You can also, again, download your October zodiac energy guide that's going to help you walk through all of these energy shifts, understand where they're taking place in your life, and be able to connect the dots to some situations some circumstances, some topics and themes that, of course, you're going to have to review. You're going to have to really pay close attention to as the energy shifts push us away from one aspect of our lives and push us into another. Mercury is going to be making a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money. In her rulership over Libra season, in her rulership over this Libra new moon solar eclipse event. But of course, she is doing the deep dive into the darkness, if you will, in Scorpio energy. What I love about this is that, again, we're still in confusion land. We're still in delusion land. However, we're having some major epiphanies by realizing where it is that we've had enough of certain people, places, and things, certain topics and themes, if you will. We've had enough. We're reaching a breaking point. And that Scorpio energy creates death and destruction in our lives, especially in our heart space, because that's where Venus is at, in order for us to realize what we have to put an end to, what we have to close the door upon. And of course, that puts into perspective what it is that we would prefer instead. Now, Mercury being the ruler of our headspace and Venus being in that heart space, this is a positive interaction, which means that we're having some very interesting insights on where it is that, again, the, t the scales of our lives are tipped in a not favorable direction. Again, that's what we have to end. That's what we have to put a closure to. And where it is that we have the opportunity to take action, even if it's small little improvements, either to our perspective, our headspace, our inner dialogue, our inner narrative, or to our actual emotions in order to make some adjustments on where it is that, again, we can tip the scales back into balance, back into our favor. We're starting to realize new wants, new needs, new desires, and that puts into perspective what needs to die, what needs to go, and essentially what we want to plant the seeds of, what we want to bring to life, what we want to see grow.
Now, the moon in Libra energy is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's in cancer energy. And again, if you downloaded your moon guide, if you did the work in the astro class, if you even listened to the astro forecast, you would know that Mars was a major player in this particular eclipse event as well. A square is gonna highlight the growing pains, where it is that there's some tension, there's some conflict going on in our inner realm. Again, the moon in this Libra energy is teeter-tottering back and forth, up and down in order to find that sweet spot. Mars, on the other hand, in preservation mode, in defense mode, trying to fight, defend, protect, all in which he's already built, already created. He is frustrated to the nines. He has ants in his pants. He wants to take action and make moves. But of course, in this particular cancer energy, the only action, the only moves that we're making are furthering to protect ourselves, furthering to find stability in our emotional realm. And of course, really putting into perspective now what we truly value what we're willing to fight and defend and protect and where it is that again, the ants in our pants are kind of putting us in a situation where we need to do something. We need to stabilize in our physical realms, in our emotional realms as well. The teeter tottering of these emotional scales, definitely putting us in a light fluffy vibe and then in a dark, not so nice type of vibe. We have to find a brand new sweet spot. Now, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy is going to make a positive interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. And of course, an eclipse means that the nodes of the moon are definitely trying to push us into new karmic chapters. The North Node being in Aries energy, of course, wants to get us on the right path, be more independent, get to know thyself in order to heal thyself, put our own wants, needs, and desires at the top of the list because it's time for us to actually fulfill the wants, needs, and desires desires of our own soul contracts instead of, again, backburnering our own wants, needs, and desires to put other people's wants, needs, and desires at the top of the list. That's that soak note in Libra that we are moving away from. So Venus here in the Scorpio energy, which again is about the major change of heart, the major transformation of our worth, of our values, of our wants, needs, desires, of our happiness, of our joy. We're recognizing what needs to stay, what needs to Go. So this is a positive interaction. It means that we're thinking about our future. We're thinking about what we need to be doing for ourselves. We think about where it is in our relationship dynamics that we're still feeling blocked, held back and restricted by the people in our lives in order for us to kind of catapult ourselves in this new path, in this new direction. We do have the moon in this Libra energy, making a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy and also so had a major key playing role here in this eclipse event. Now, normally, if this was a not so nice aspect, we'd be getting a harsh reality check right now. We'd be kind of getting the wind knocked out of our sails, so to speak, because that negative Nancy narrative usually kicks in when Saturn is involved in a negative aspect. But this is a positive aspect. So we're starting to see where it is that, again, there is room in our lives to build something new, where there are new goals where we're striking, I'm going to say, an epiphany on what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to pursue. And therefore, we're seeing the ability now to kind of see where the old roles and responsibilities that our old version of self had committed to, where they have to come to an end. We're bossing up, if you will. Emotionally speaking, we are feeling a little bit more focused, a little bit more determined to actually initiate something new, to build a brand new foundation, especially within ourselves, where willpower, discipline are concerned in order for us to actually bring our goals, our dreams, our visions into fruition. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who of course is retrograde in Taurus energy. Venus, again, rules over the Libra energy that the moon is in and the Taurus energy that Uranus is in. And so again, Uranus, another very important role that he is playing under this eclipse series. 
But the moon and Uranus, when they come together in a positive way, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be a light bulb moment, an epiphany. Something pops off in our brain. Suddenly we're seeing the forest past the trees. We're seeing solutions where we once saw problems. And in this particular case, because Uranus being retrograde and Taurus energy, is trying to show us where it is that we're overly attached to the past, where it is that we are holding on so tightly to what it is that we've built and created that, again, we're missing the opportunity to kind of use our hands to build something new in the place of the things that, of course, we've outgrown. So this is going to be an aha moment that is going to illuminate for us where it is that we are very slowly but surely building ourselves up in self-esteem, in self-worth, in self-confidence to actually be brave and bold and courageous enough to let go of certain aspects of the past and to again start aligning ourselves with the goals, the visions, the dreams of our future. The moon is then going to try and beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who of course is in Gemini energy. We get this trine because it's air on air action. Libra energy is a cardinal air energy, while the Gemini energy that Jupiter is in is a mutable air energy. What does that mean? Well, mutability means that we're bringing new information, new perspectives in, new details in. We're really challenging our old thoughts, our old ideas ideas. The cardinal energy that Libra is, is the initiator energy. So again, when we're presented with information and details that make us believe that improvements or adjustments are needed, we're able to take action upon them. But again, in air energy, this is all just thought. This is all just chitter chatter. This is all just, you know, imagination land. Not that that's a bad thing. We have to capture a vision in our mind's eye, back it up with an emotion before we can engage the physical body to take action and make moves in the physical realm. What we love about Jupiter is that because he's being kind of aspected in a very positive way, he's bringing growth expansion to some of the ideas that we've been teeter-tottering back and forth about. He's also bringing a lot of confidence. We're actually feeling capable, able of making, I'm going to say some sort of decision, although again, we're in labor season, so indecision is reigning supreme here. We are making some sort of little decision on our options and opportunities that we currently have available to us, especially where learning is concerned, where growth is concerned, where evolving is concerned, we're really kind of conjuring up a new vision for the future is concerned as well. The moon is going to directly oppose Chiron, though. Chiron being the wounded healer, he is retrograde in Aries energy. We have Libra and Aries energy sitting across from each other in the zodiac wheel. And of course, where Chiron is the wounded healer and he's being aspected in a not so nice way, we're likely going to be sitting in the wounds just when we were building ourselves up. This is when the scales again tip into the opposite extreme and we fall off of our high horse. We fall out of that confidence, that optimistic perspective and point of view. And now we're sitting in the fears, the doubts, the insecurities. We're coming up with all the reasons of maybe why it won't work, why it isn't going to come into fruition, why we're not capable of creating the vision, the goal, the dream that our inner realm wants us to manifest. Either way, this is a flashback to, again, the old version of self with those limiting beliefs, with that old perspective, with that old pain and trauma that, again, we are still processing. We are still attempting to heal. We are making progress there. But sometimes when we have these intense oppositions, we get thrown back into the past. And of course, that particular aspect gives us perspective on how far it is that we've actually come, how much we've actually been able to heal and what it is that, again, we still have to kind of deal with head on. The last thing that we have going on here today is Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money. Again, Scorpio energy doing the shadow work. She is going to be making an awkward interaction, a little bit tension filled, not as much as a full square. That's for sure. Not as much as a semi square, but we're feeling uncomfortable. And here's why this particular awkward interaction involves Neptune and Neptune, of course, is retrograde in its place of power in this Pisces energy. And of course, that whole particular life lesson, if you will, is to deal with life as it is not for the way that we wished it would be. However, 
We have Neptune as the higher octave of Venus, which means that in our dreams, in our creativity, in our mind's eye, in our soul, in our spirit, if you will, whatever it is that we're able to kind of, you know, visualize whatever it is that we dream about, we are actually able to bring it to life through Venus because she rules over the physical body and she is the portal between the divine imagination, creative type of energy that we can't put our hands on and the physical form, bringing it into this materialistic realm. Oftentimes when Neptune and Venus are working together in a positive interaction, that's when we can actually make sense of a lot of the dreams, a lot of the visions, a lot of the downloads that we've been receiving. However, this is not one of those aspects. This is an awkward interaction. And let me just say, we are losing ourselves at this particular juncture to Delulu land, meaning we have the ability to put rose colored glasses onto our face. We have the ability to believe whatever it is that we want to believe because we're glossing over the details that don't fit our narrative. We are glossing over the flaws in our story, in our narrative, in our plans, in our vision, in our dreams. We are solely focused on the good. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when there are a lot of you know red flags over here, just uh, waving, when we go out of our way to ignore those red flags, just to focus on the good, we are in fact in Delulu land, okay? That is not realistic at all. That is us picking and choosing what it is that we want to focus on, what it is that we want to create a narrative about, what it is that we are pouring into, which matter of factly is lacking matter of facts. So here's the thing. We are looking at people through the rose colored glasses. We're seeing them in a better image than they're actually presenting themselves. We're looking at situations and circumstances with these rose colored glasses on, not necessarily seeing the fire that are start, you know, fires that are started over in the corners of the peripheral of our eyes. It's almost like, you know, there's rainbows and butterflies right ahead of us. And there's absolute chaos and craziness and damage and destruction on the side of us. And we are just putting the blinders on and focusing in on the rainbows and butterflies. Now, again, not all the time bad. Sometimes we need to do that just to get through the hard parts of our lives. But we are in a situation where relationships are concerned because, again, eclipse season, soul contracts have been rocked. We're in labor season, has everything to do with partnerships and relationships and money matters, money situations, money circumstances. We are focused on the good. We are focused on what it is that we want to be focused on. We're actually making up little stories, little lies, if you will, to tell ourselves so that we can stay in this little bubble. We are being veiled because Neptune causes a little bit of a fog, a little bit of a layer of delusion and confusion here. We're being veiled from the actual truth from the actual reality. We're still in eclipse energy. We've been eclipsed from the truth, from the reality, from the plan moving forward. We've been eclipsed from a lot. So what I'm going to say to you is, is that there's going to be an impulse to either be overly affectionate, declaring your, let's call it emotions, wants, needs, and desires to other people in relationship dynamics. There's also going to be an impulse to spend money on things that right now seem really good, seem like things that are good investments. You are not seeing the matter of fact. You're not seeing the truth. These are bad ideas. There are all kinds of red flags, but because the blinders are on, we're choosing not to see them. If you can resist the temptation to act on impulse, to keep your thoughts, your feelings to yourself and to not spend the money that you want to be spending on, because again, they're just novelty purchases trying to fill a void, a wound within you. If you can avoid that in a couple of days, you're going to be seeing things very clearly. If you're not able to avoid that, you're going to be embarrassed in a couple of days. You're going to have regret in a couple of days. You're going to have serious, let's call it buyer's remorse and verbal vomit remorse as well. So do yourself a favor, keep yourself in check, remind yourself that the way that you're seeing life right now isn't the way that life actually is.